What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We're back at Dealers Auto Auction here in Oklahoma City for another walk around and some test drives. Let's jump into this video today and see what we find. So we're walking through the rental car aisle. We went through a bunch of Avis cars yesterday and today we're gonna to be looking at some of these Hertz cars. A couple of Explorers or these Expeditions. They're awful big. I think those are Expeditions, guys. And what is this? And why do they all have busted windshields? Everything out here has got a busted windshield right now. So this is an Explorer, which looks much smaller than this. So this is gonna have to be an Expedition because this thing is absolutely huge. 2022 Expedition Max Limited. That actually sounds, that actually sounds pretty nice. <laughs> Expedition Max Limited. What about this one? 2022 Expedition Max Limited. XLT. So I'm assuming an Expedition Max is going to be a long wheelbase, and then the Limited is probably like absolutely top of the line. Let's see if we can get through here. Ugh, it's a tight fit over here, guys. This is this is really nice, really nice. It's got good tires. It's got some scrapes and scratches to be expected from a rental car, but... Oh, wow. Look at that interior. No joke, I love the color. And take a look, it's got the panoramic roof. Oh yeah. It doesn't smell the greatest. A lot of these rental cars don't, and you have to consider if they're rental cars, they're probably gonna, you know, need to be ozoned and cleaned up and they may need a little service here and there. I don't know if this is something I'm really all that interested in jumping into and test driving, but we'll at least give it a quick look. I do love the color of this interior though. I mean, seriously, that brown is just, uh, I like it. You got your Bang & Olsen stereo system, 48,000 miles on the odometer. Nice little digital center display there. A nice big screen there. Audio's off. I love the size. I mean, this is, guys, this is a good size screen. That's the size of a, of a tablet. Somebody's got the heated seats on. We can turn all that off. It's a weird time in Oklahoma. We're transitioning from summer to winter to fall to winter again. Like, we went from hot days of summer and then we got below freezing for several days in a row. It was so cold. And then it got back into the 80s and now it's supposed to drop into the 40s. So literally we went from summer to winter and now it's like we're moving into fall. So it's a very strange, bizarre time here in Oklahoma. I'm sure a lot of you are going through the exact same thing. I'm gonna pop the hood. I assume this has got the twin turbo 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Let's take a peek. Oh, maybe it's a 2.7. Either that or the, the 3.5 cover is missing. That's the only way I know. The 2.7 doesn't have a cover. The 3.5 does. So this may be a, a 2.7. It's a 3.5. It's just missing its cover, I suppose. Yeah, I, I thought something like this, you probably want to have that 3.5 in here. It sounds good. Fired right up. Didn't make any rattling noises when you first started it. You can hear a little rattling. That's the direct injection. Yeah, you know, as much as I like this and as much as I would absolutely drive this, I have my truck. You know, I do. I have my uh, I have my new Ram. So I really don't need something like this. And I think a lot of people today are out here looking for something smaller, a little more fuel efficient. Uh, I think things like this, these big old Suburbans and, and Tahoes, Explorers and Expeditions, I think those are things that are probably not going to be hot on people's list of cars that they just got to have uh, just because of how expensive everything is today. Those are expensive vehicles. They get horrible gas mileage, even with the EcoBoost. They don't get great gas mileage, guys. So you're talking about paying an expensive price for a car plus high interest rates over the next eight years, plus, you know, low fuel economy numbers, plus the high cost of gas. You roll all that up and what do you have? Well, you have something that most people just are not going to be looking for. So we're going to look at some other things. How about this? You know, I don't think I've ever driven a Ford Fusion Hybrid. 
I know it's a little bit older and well it may not be exciting it's a 2017 Ford Fusion Hybrid it looks good it's got good tires the paint looks great the body looks great I don't know what the fuel economy is on these but I mean it's a hybrid so it's got to be decent right this doesn't look like it's a very well optioned car pretty basic which means you know it's probably going to go well not for cheap i won't say cheap and ford fusion in the same sentence because i have looked at purchasing ford fusions before some hybrids some not and i'm going to tell you that for whatever reason that i do not understand ford fusions they tend to sell a little on the high side uh people really love these things but again, I can't say one way or the other because I don't think I've ever driven one. I've walked by them, I've glanced at them, but I've never actually driven one. So maybe it's time we check out a Ford Fusion. 67,000 miles on the odometer. It's got push to start. It's got cloth interior. This is not a rental car. It's got a bang of keys, lots of keys and purse comes with it oh gsa sale gotcha okay so if you don't know what gsa is these are all going to be gsa then these are government surplus auction meaning these cars belonged uh to the state of oklahoma service tire mobility kit all right it says it's ready to drive it's got a nice instrument cluster i really do like the instrument cluster on this i wanted to pull up black book on this one and figure out Oh, that hood. Here we go. Good Lord. Didn't want to open. We're going to have to figure out uh, what something like this is worth. This one's parked between two different spots. So I'll try to park it right back in between those two spots. So it looks like most of the stuff over here is going to be the government surplus auction cars. Let's see if we can figure out where the... There it is. Ford loves to hide the releases on these. Yep, it's a hybrid. Sounds good. Relatively low miles. Doesn't look like it's ever been wrecked. All the little uh, plastic clips are in place. Body panels look like they line up nicely. These cars are usually treated very well. The government surplus cars are usually well maintained. They're driven a lot on the highways. So they're pretty decent cars. And a lot of them are going to be white or gray. That's, <laughs> that's pretty common for a government surplus car. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull up the black book on this real quick. I'm curious how much something like this would go for. Then we're gonna take it on a test drive and see what the old hybrids got under the hood. Now, I'm not here to tell you what a car is worth. I really don't know, but I'm taking a look at my black book and it says that this car is worth, well, right around $10,000. For that? I, I don't know. Um, that's what it says. Personally, when I think of what I can buy for $10,000, a Ford Fusion Hybrid is not even on the list of cars that comes to my mind. You know, I've bought a ton of cars this year, guys. I, I mean, an absolute ton. I bought more cars this year than I've ever bought before. And it's just $10,000. You know, maybe that's a good price for this, I, I suppose, but I'm just, I just don't see it. I would rather take my 10 grand and buy a number of other cars besides this, but I've never driven one, so we'll give it a chance. We'll take it out on the road and we'll see how it does. All right, let's put it in gear. It's got one of these weird gear shifters here. And the engine shut off, so it is a hybrid. It's just weird to have the engine turn off on you. I'd love to see some fuel economy numbers. Average miles per gallon, 37.4. All right, not going to lie. That's that's really good. <laughs> 37.4. All right. Not too shabby. And that's over the last 1,915 miles. That's not bad at all. That's really not bad at all. And over the last 10,000 miles, it's averaged 36.9 miles a gallon. 36.9. Okay. Well, we're about to kill that fuel economy because, you know, I got I to gotta hit the gas. 
we're parked right next to a white Dodge in front of these uh, moving trucks. So it does not sound like the engine, the gasoline engine has turned back on yet. So we still must be driving uh, in electric mode. Oh wow, it's, it's actually quite comfortable. <laughs> Somehow I didn't expect this. And this is an S model, so it's a very base model uh, Ford Fusion. I'm, I'm honestly a little surprised. I thought this was going to be a clunky, you know, econobox type of car. A and this is actually decent. Let's give it a little throttle. The gas engine kicked in. Oh, it's CVT. Yeah, it's, it's CVT. Yeah. I, I don't like CVT. I really don't. Um, as far as technology goes, this car doesn't have any. There's, uh, all the technology in this car is under the hood. You don't get any of it inside the car. Um, you've got a teeny tiny little stereo system and underneath it, you know, kind of an old clunky uh, climate control system. Uh, the gear selectors, you know, you know, it's, yeah. Um, is there a sport mode? <laughs> That's all I want to know. I can see an eco button. We could turn that off, but I don't think there's any type of a sport mode, which makes sense. I mean, it's a hybrid. It's not made for, for sport mode. I'll put you guys down on the accelerator. Let's give it the, the beans. Oh, it is so slow. And it kind of wanders all over the road. There's 60. Eh, you know, it's very bizarre. The steering on this is, when I was getting up to speed, it was pulling left and then to kind of go right, then it'd pull kind of left and it'd go right again. It was, it was, the steering was very unpredictable. I don't feel like it's got any suspension problems. It's just, it's very strange in the way that it handled. I, I did not care for that at all. With that said, you're talking about a $10,000 car that can get you close to 40 miles a gallon if you're relatively easy on the gas. Um, my biggest concern with this car would be the CVT. You know, I just don't, I don't know how reliable the CVT in these Fords are. What I do know is that when you think of more modern cars like the Ford Focus and, and the Fiesta with the dual clutch transmissions, you know, those are not reliable. I don't think Ford has been known for reliable transmissions for a long time. So it concerns me uh, with 70,000 miles on the odometer that we could be, we could end up with some kind of CVT transmission problem in the future. Then again, it could last another 100,000 miles. I don't know this car well enough to say one way or the other. I'm just saying for 10 grand, for a car that can get close to 40 miles a gallon, not bad, not bad at all. Now here's an interesting one. I'm assuming this is also GSA. Probably everything over here is all government surplus. Um, obviously, I, I fell in love with this. I know you guys couldn't care less, uh, but it's a 2015 Impala, 30,000 original miles. Yes, 30,000 original miles on a 2015 Impala. The paint, the body is absolutely gorgeous on this. I'll get right back to the to the Hyundai here in a second. But take a look at this. You tell me when the last time you saw an Impala from this generation, this old, that still looked this good. I mean, this car looks phenomenal, guys. It, it really does. The tint has faded to a brown, so it makes the interior look a little weird. But... <laughs> I'm telling you overall, this is nice. It's a limited. Oh, what's all over this? That'll probably buff out. It's got decent tires. Um, it is a fleet vehicle, GSA fleet, says right there on the door, GSA fleet. 
I'm, I'd be willing to bet this is going to go for some money. You know, there's your GSA card, Smart Pay. Oh, that's... Well, it's expired, so I guess it doesn't matter, I think. I don't know. I don't know what that is. All right, so it fires right up. Industry-leading warranties will give you total confidence. And it sounds great. 30,000 miles. No way. We got to check the air conditioning. And I got to pop the hood. I, I just, I can't believe that this is sitting here. Important window works. Like, everything on this car is probably going to work. I don't know what engine is in it, so we're gonna we're gonna check under the hood real quick. Man, the steering feels great. I was interested in this, and I'll get back to that in just a second. Uh, but now I'm really interested in this one. I just I love these Impalas. Always have 3.6 liters. What it is? These things are great motors. These are great motors, great transmissions. If you take care of these, they'll literally last you forever. This is the same engine and transmissions that they used all the way till the end of the Impala. I mean, it's it's just a it's a phenomenal combination, motor and transmission. Okay, I low key want this, but first I need to look up on Black Book and see how much this car should even be worth. So according to Black Book, I'm surprised it's actually worth a decent amount of money, around eighty six hundred dollars with a loan value of ten thousand four hundred and twenty five dollars. Um, so definitely valued a little higher than I thought it was going to be. Uh, with that said, I mean, it is a nice car, but I think that limited sticker may be incorrect. And I don't know why I didn't catch this at first, but the limited was supposed to be like, wasn't the limited fully loaded? Or, you know what? No, it wasn't. Okay, so they had two versions of the Impala in 2015. I forgot about that. There's two versions. You guys know I have a 2014 Impala at the house, but it does not look like this. My Impala is the next generation, the next body style from this one. And I also have this body style at the house too. So 2015, you could have gotten my body style Impala, or you could have purchased this Impala. So they call this the Limited. Whereas in my new generation Impala, the Limited would have been totally loaded. It would have been fully loaded. They call this the Limited because this is the, this is the old body style Impala that they were selling at the same time as the new body style Impala. So this is going to be a base model. This is going to be an LS. It has, it has no options to speak of. It's cloth interior and yeah, which is fine. I mean, it's absolutely fine. I just don't know if I'd be willing to spend close to $10,000 on, you know, a base model Chevy Impala. Uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd think about it. If, if I thought I could get some money out of it when I sold it, absolutely. But we all know that I lose money, so that would, that would never happen. It still has the spare tire. This thing is honestly in pretty remarkable shape, especially considering the age. It really is. The air conditioning did not come on, you know. So that's kind of surprising with only 30,000 miles on it. We're going to come back to this one in just a second. I actually want to take this one for a test drive. As much as I don't want to spend $8,000 on an old Chevy Impala, I'm going to hope that maybe nobody else is going to want this and I might be able to get it a little bit cheaper. Let's come back over here and take a look at this one. And the reason I say this is going to be cheap is because, well, the paint is mostly gone. It's coming apart. It's a 2018 and it says it has zero miles on the odometer. I find that very interesting. Zero miles on a 2018. So realistically, when we look at this thing, it should be brand new. It's got good tires. It's got a high shine paint, like a lot of flakes, kind of like little diamonds sprinkled throughout. Well, what's left of the paint anyway, take a look at that. I mean, the paint is gorgeous. It looks kind of like my pickup truck. So this car has got no miles on it, which means it's brand new. It's a 2018 that never got driven, which is very strange because when you buy a car brand new, generally speaking, uh, in my experience anyway, they've at least got four, five, seven, 10, 15 miles on the odometer. Uh, I've never seen one with zero miles before. Oh, that's not zero miles, guys. Okay. <laughs> 
There you go. This one's got 81,000 miles on the odometer, so that is a far cry from, from zero. So we'll, I'm gonna pass on this one completely. Uh, I thought the zero miles was interesting. I thought we come across some kind of a, a rare vehicle here with no miles on it. I had to see it. This one I'm gonna take out for a test drive. I am because, I don't know. $8,000, would you guys buy a 30,000 mile Impala? Probably not. Does it have power seats? It does, it's got power seats. So that's nice. We can adjust our seats. It needs the windows completely retinted. Power seats work. Maybe the air conditioner's not on. Oh, it wasn't. The, the AC button wasn't pressed. So the AC might actually work. Let's find out. I'm gonna buckle up. We'll take this thing out for a quick ride. 24.4 miles a gallon. These things really do well. They they do. This thing's not even due for a tune-up yet. Absolutely insane. All right, let's take it for a for a little drive. Oh, the steering is so tight on this. Wow. I don't think I've ever driven an Impala from this generation that felt so new. Ever. Like <laughs> Wow. I thought my old ones drove nice, and they do. Like, they, they absolutely drive just fine, but you don't realize how nice and tight everything is until you get into something like this that has no miles on the odometer, and you're like, wow, it really is. This thing is like a brand new car. And the air conditioning is ice cold. Shifts great. Sounds great. Rides perfect. The brakes are phenomenal. I, I kind of got to have this car. Um, man, I'm hoping that this is not going to be a hot commodity item, but I know that it will because everybody buys these Impalas. Like, you can buy these things and sell them the same day. People love a Chevy Impala. They just do. And this, with 30,000 miles, someone's going to buy this in a heartbeat. Absolutely. There's no way. I don't stand a chance of winning this car. Let's give it some beans, see how it does. Yep. There she goes. <laughs> There's 60. Yeah, she'll get it. You got to remember, this, this little 3.6 liter V6 is naturally aspirated, so it's quick off the line. There's no turbo lag. But also... This thing's like 300 horsepower, which I know by today's standards may not seem like that much, but 300 horsepower in a car like this will absolutely move. <laughs> this car gets it, no joke. I am, I thought I was really interested in a different car. I was, I was really thinking about dropping the 17,000-ish dollars for the Infiniti Q50 that I filmed the other day, but I guess I could get both. I don't really want to buy both though. I, I'd prefer to only buy one vehicle from here right now because I've got like six vehicles that I'm currently winning. So, I don't know. Um, eight grand. That's a lot of money that I won't have anymore to spend on something else. And really, am I actually going to use this car or am I going to drive it for a few days and then park it under the tree where all my other cars are that I never drive? I don't know, but this one is definitely on my list of cars that I really, really want. So I think we got time for one more GSA car and then we're going to call it a wrap. This is a 2014 Ford Focus and it's got a weird designation and also some really strange hubcaps. So I'm a little confused about this one. Take, just take a look at these hubcaps. It almost looks like a hybrid. And I was thinking, I don't recall there being a Ford Focus hybrid. This is an SFE. I've heard of the SE. In fact, sitting right next to it's another GSA Focus and it's an SE. The one next to that, another GSA Focus SE and another Focus SE. But none of them are SFE. So what exactly does this designation mean? Uh, sporty fuel efficient? I don't know, a flex fuel. It's got a little bit of damage, super low miles though. It's got a little bit of 
bumps and bruises on the back bumper. Very odd hubcaps. <laughs> Aside from that though, it actually looks pretty good. And 40,000 miles, well that's really not bad for any car. This window got left down. We'll go ahead and close that. I assume the interior is gonna be in really nice shape. Hopefully it has power because I wanna drive this. Let's take a look at the inside. It actually does look, looks pretty nice. This is, this is a decent little car, guys. Headliner. Looks good. The seats. I mean, everything in here looks really, really good. The dashboard, even the door panel. Well, let's climb in. 40,000 miles. Like, this car has a whole nother 10,000 miles left before it starts breaking down. I'm, I'm joking. I know there's some Ford fans out there that are getting upset. Just, I'm just joking. Now, obviously, it's still a pretty base model car. The screen is like the size of my thumb. It's a tiny screen. And, you know, you have the clunky old school controls for your climate. I'll turn on the air conditioning. We'll see if it works. I like that it has a nice regular shifter. Let's pop the hood on this. Let's see if this window works. It does. Obviously, it's not good to leave windows down supposed to have rain tomorrow so let's pop the hood on this bad boy and again Ford loves to hide the hood props the hood release you never know if they're gonna be on the left or are they gonna be on the right there it is that's what I mean man Ford is sometimes they put them on the left sometimes they put them on the right whereas most people put them dead in the center right there where it's super easy to get to so 40,000 miles um, Wow, this thing sat for a long time. There's mouse poop all over it. There's, I don't know where it sat, but it sat in a pretty, pretty nasty location. This engine needs to be seriously cleaned. You can see there's a lot of dead leaves and stuff under there. So yeah, it looks like with a lot of these GSA cars, which leads me into a whole nother issue, um, but it looks like with a lot of the GSA cars, it looks like they buy them, they don't get used all that much, and then they get parked and forgotten for years until eventually they sit there and they go, hey, we've got these cars that we should probably sell, and then they get rid of them. The problem I have with that is obviously government cars are purchased with tax money. That's right, your money and my money pays for these vehicles. And I understand the government needs vehicles. That's no, I mean, I get it, but if you buy them and then you don't use them and then you park them and let them sit what you're doing is you're letting these cars sit and depreciate the every year that goes by these cars become worth less and less money so if you realize after the first two or three years of driving that this car is no longer going to be used it's probably time to go ahead and liquidate the asset while it's still worth a little more money but then again i mean at the end of the day it's not really their money. It's our money. It's basically free money for them. So, okay. I'm not trying to complain too much about the government. Obviously, we don't need a negative Nancy on here bringing everybody down. I'm just saying that it seems like it seems like some of these cars get parked for a while and then they get let go when they should have been let go while they were still worth some money. Anyway, enough of all of that. Let's take this ooh little vibration there. I swear a lot of Fords have a, uh, it feels like a motor mount vibration and they have them from new. It's just, it's just the way they come. It's going to complain about my seatbelt. For once I didn't put a seatbelt on. I think this is old enough to still have a regular transmission. I don't think we have a CVT in this one. Well, we're going to take her on the road here and just see how it does. Average fuel economy over the last 227 miles is 25.2 miles a gallon. There really is a, a gnarly little vibration there. It's kind of annoying. You know, it's not going to win any races, but it's not a race car. It's an econo box. It's supposed to get you decent fuel economy and be relatively reliable and fairly cheap car. I still want to know what the SFE is for. I've never seen that designation before. Um, and I can only assume it's got something to do with increased fuel economy. 
mainly because of those weird hubcaps that this thing has. Let me get you guys down here on the gauges. Let's give her the beans. Oh, she stumbled. It, there's 60. Boy, it got to 60 at the end of the track, too. <laughs> yeah, she's, uh... She... She's a little slow, guys, um, and definitely stumbled a couple times under heavy acceleration. So that could be from being parked for quite a while. That would be my guess, is that uh, it might need to get some gas run through it. I'd put a clean fuel filter in it. I'd go ahead and do a tune-up. I know it's not time for one at 39,000 miles, but I'd probably, on this one, I'd probably go ahead and really go through it, change all of the fluids. I think that would go a long way to help this car run a whole lot better. All right, a lot of these cars are just kind of parked in the middle of parking spots here, so I'm just gonna kind of do the same. I'm just gonna throw it where I throw it. It runs all right. That vibration that comes and goes with RPM is a little annoying, but it's not anything that's concerning. I felt it before in other cars. I don't think it's anything to be worried about. You know, Let's take a look under the fuel cap real quick and just see if it's full of gunk because my guess is it probably is. Man, I don't think I could have parked that any perfecter on that line. Not too shabby. Now, surprisingly, it's, I thought it'd be full of gunk and, you know, ew. No, not so much. E85, though, flex fuel vehicle. So... I don't know, you know, what's this thing even worth? Let's find out. $5,225 is what is what the, the book says. Um, God, man. You know, at the end of the day, for a low mileage used car, that's really not a lot of money. Um, now I know that's more money than most of us could come up with out of pocket. Like, I doubt many of us have five grand that we could just walk out and buy this car because we wanted it. But, I mean, really, five grand, not bad. And this goes back to, some of you are going to remember, hopefully, I, I did a, a couple videos when I was walking around another auction where I was talking about, everybody keeps saying that there's no cheap cars left. They don't exist. There's none left. Well, I'm here to tell you right now. All right, I'm at the dealer auction. Now, granted, not everybody can come to the dealer auction and buy the dealer-only cars. But the GSA auction, if I'm correct, is open to the public. They actually have public auction days here, guys. So you can bid here at the dealer auction. You can't bid on all of the cars, but they have public days where you, the public, can come out here and actually bid. You're telling me five grand is not cheap for a car with only 40,000 miles? It's a 2014? Okay. Fine. Well, guys, I'm here to tell you, every one of these cars, take a look. Here's another one. Here's a 2016. This one's got 90,000 miles on it. All right. Probably worth about the same as that one because this one is a little bit newer, but it also has a little higher mileage. So probably still around the $5,000 mark. Here's a 2017 with 40,000 miles on the odometer. Of course, this one's going to be a little bit more because it's a few years newer, but we're looking at a bunch of cars here that are probably 10 grand and under. You know, here's a 2015 with 80 or 51,000 miles on the odometer. This one too, probably right around five, six thousand dollars. So I'm here looking at one, two, three, four. I've got five cars in front of me right now. And if you include the Impala that I looked at, that was eight thousand dollars with only thirty thousand miles on the odometer. I've got a slew of cars right here in front of me that are sub $10,000 vehicles, all relatively newer cars with low mileage that should give you years of trouble-free use and thousands and thousands of miles. And you want me to believe that there are no cheap cars left because of this crazy market? Guys, you're being lied to. So this is probably the most expensive of the ones that we're looking at. Because it's a 2017, it's newer, and it only has 40,000 miles. But remember, I said this was probably a $10,000 car. Some of you are probably thinking, no way. Guys, take a look. Right here is the black book values on it. 
$10,425 with a loan value of 12 grand. What that means is that if you came and you bought this car for 10 grand at this auction, you could go to your credit union and borrow more money than you paid. Now, I know you're thinking auction fees, <laughs> guys, not at auctions like this. These are not the same kind of auctions as the salvage auctions, okay? A salvage auction, you can end up paying thousands of dollars in fees. At dealer auctions like these, you typically are gonna be looking at a $300 fee. That, that's right, it's gonna probably cost you two or $300 in fees to buy the car on top of your winning bid. It's, it's a different type of place, guys. Um, and I love coming to this auction among the other dealer auctions. I love the salvage auctions as well, but at the end of the day, the fees really do stack up and it really does hurt there being any money left on the table for a profit. We'll fire this one up real quick. The battery seemed like it was a little bit low. Steering feels good. I mean, 40,000 miles on the odometer, are you serious? Door ajar, we can clear these codes. Um, average fuel economy, 36.4 miles a gallon, okay? You're talking about a car that's 10 grand that can get you 36 miles a gallon, almost 40 miles a gallon out of this thing. Now, it doesn't have a lot of features. It's, you know, again, pretty basic, but let's turn off that radio goes right into gear forwards and backwards you got a nice little backup camera it's got air conditioning i heard the compressor kick on i guarantee the ac works you've got a re really really reasonable instrument cluster here i like the way it looks almost 40 miles a gallon for 10 grand and i'll, I'll bet money it doesn't go for 10 grand i i would put money on it that this is not going to go for ten thousand dollars and Everybody's telling me that there's no cheap cars left. Yes, there are. You just got to get out and find them, guys. And believe me, it's not just me that can find them. All right, there's, I don't have some secret that the rest of the world doesn't have. Yeah, by the way, the AC, absolutely ice cold. Ice cold, good tires, paint looks good, body's good, interior's good, it's clean, it smells good. What more do you want? What more do you want? Let's see if we can pop this hood. Like I said, Ford loves to move the things around on us. This was a lot cleaner under the hood than the other one was. There's plenty of these out here. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. And like I said, this auction does open to the public, I think once a month. It's either once or twice a month. They open this up to the public and the public can come out here and bid on cars. So it's not limited to dealers only. I'm trying to tell you guys, stop believing all the hype that everybody's trying to tell you to get views, man. There are absolutely still cars out here that are affordable for the average consumer. Now I'll be the first to admit that most people don't have $10,000 laying around that they can just go buy a car. But I think a lot of people are able to go and take out a loan for a vehicle, especially if you can buy the vehicle for less money than the car is worth. You, you could absolutely buy a $10,000 car, pay it off in three or four years, you know, take out a four or five year loan on it, make additional payments, pay it off quicker, pay bi-weekly. Instead of paying monthly, pay bi-weekly. It'll make a huge impact on the interest and pay the thing off in a couple, three years. And then when you're done with it, maybe sell it take the money and go buy yourself another one and do it all over again. Um, obviously, ideally, you would want to pay cash for everything instead of taking a loan out and paying interest. But I mean, I mean, realistically, how many people have that kind of money just sitting around they can go buy a car? Some people do and some people don't. With that, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I just wanted to show you that these cars still exist. I don't know what everybody else is talking about because if they're here at this auction, then they're at your auctions too. These cars are still out here. People just don't want you to know about it. It's all about getting views. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Definitely drop your comments down below and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. Until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.